Hey guys, this is Darko and today I'm sharing with you picture settings which I've obtained on Sharp's EQ series for 2022. This series is meant for the European market and there are other variations, EQ3 and also EQ6 and 7 for different markets, but essentially these are same TVs with same settings running Android TV 11. So let's take a look. First to say that among many picture presets which are available, the best one to use is Movie for general content and TV shows and live TV. And then for gaming, you have Game Picture Preset and in either of them, you also have PC mode for full color resolution in case you want to connect your laptop or your computer to the TV and get the best sharpness and resolution. So now what I'll do, I'll press settings button on the remote and you see this TV options menu. I'll click picture and on the right hand side, you see picture mode movie. As I mentioned, there are different presets available. By default, TV will come in energy saving, which has very inaccurate colors. And same applies for all those other modes. Movie is the best one to use. You will see this notification. Yes, we want to use movie mode. We have Dolby Vision notification in case of Dolby Vision content, which is supported on this TV. You can trigger this option here. Auto brightness is ambient light sensor. So if you enable it, the control below backlight will get grayed out and it will automatically be adjusted depending on how much light you have in the room. And what is good is that you will actually see this value decreasing or increasing if you stay in the menu and adjust light in the room. And what is good is that if you set it to, for example, 100, the maximum it will drop is 60%, so from 100 to 40 and same goes for other values. So there is also a relationship between the setting you adjust like this manually and how much it will vary depending on conditions in the room. Brightness is black level set to 50. Contrast was set to 50 by default, but that crushed too many details in highlights. So there was a lot of clipping, so I reduced it to 30. You can use test patterns freely available online to check brightness and contrast on your unit. Next we have color saturation which is correctly set to 50. Hue of colors also you can leave it at zero. Sharpness I adjusted to zero in order to get the cleanest image without any artificial sharpening. Default value is four. And by really carefully checking sharpness test patterns, I did notice it adds a little bit of this uh, halo effect, but it's really hard to spot, especially if you're sitting at normal viewing distance, so some meters away from the screen. But for the purest image, set it to zero. Gamma in movie mode default is dark, which sets gamma to approximately 2.6 value, middle will give you closest value to BT.1886 and then bright is close to gamma 2.2 so depending on your preferences you can adjust this value. Color temperature, the best is to use user setting or warm and then you have gain so for white balance in bright area you can adjust it here. And you see my values, red gain 3, green gain minus 4, and blue gain minus 39. Display mode automatic. This is to give you different formats of the picture. You also have unscaled version. But in general, automatic mode works fine. Advanced video has many settings, digital noise reduction, very effective, already at low value. MPEG noise reduction, not that effective, but it will help with this blocking in compressed content. In general, for quality content, keep it turned off. 
Adaptive Luma Control and Local Contrast are basically dynamic contrast controls. I kept both turned off. Blue Stretch turned off, Game Mode not available here. Auto Low Latency Mode is enabled and as I mentioned for full color resolution you can trigger PC mode here. 10-bit color reproduction for 8-bit content, uh, this could improve gradations in the image, but in general gradations looked fine on this TV with this option turned off, so I didn't enable it. Motion enhancement, you have soap opera effect on this 60 Hz TV, and you can choose the level of motion interpolation, low, middle and high, and what is good is that you can also trigger demo to see the difference how it affects motion but if you want to see movies with constant tempo then turn off this control hdmi rgb range auto here you have full or limit so if you notice details being crushed and image not looking properly especially when you connect pc then you might want to check this control. Low blue light, this will further reduce blue component in image, but if you correctly set white balance, then you don't need it. Now let's go back to color tuner where we have many controls. Here you can adjust hue, saturation and brightness for primary and secondary controls. And you also have flash tone control here. So if you notice skin tones not looking natural, then you have also controls here. And mainly I did small tweaks here, so nothing significant. Then coming back to white balance controls, we saw before gain controls. Here again we have gain controls for white balance but also offset, so this is for dark balance, so for darker parts of the image. And you see small tweaks I've done here. And then if you want to further adjust white balance, you have 11 point white balance correction. If you enable it, you see different levels here, and the lowest one is 5%. But by doing this, uh, dark and bright two-point white balance adjustments, I was able to obtain really accurate uh, and neutral grayscale across the range. And that's it related to movie mode. Now I can show you game picture preset. So same controls available here. Backlight 40, brightness 50, contrast 30, saturation 50, then 0 and 0 for hue and sharpness. Gamma middle, color temperature warm, and in this case I adjusted red gain, green gain, and blue gain like this. And then if we proceed to advanced video, everything is disabled. This should be also turned off. And here you have auto low latency mode, so when TV detects game content, it will automatically switch to game mode. And you also have PC mode here. And in game mode, 10-bit color reproduction option is turned off. Motion enhancement, same here. Like in movie mode, disabled. And RGB range set to auto, low blue light off. Color tuner, let's see hue. So we see small changes I did here. Saturation, brightness offset and gain. Of course th these are individual values, I'm just showing them for reference for your information. And there were no changes to white balance. And now let's see HDR10 content, which settings it offers. Again I'll go to picture menu, picture mode movie, in HDR you will have backlight set to maximum value, but for example during nighttime watching, if it's too bright image, you can 
of course decrease the value or also use auto brightness control. Brightness 50, contrast 50, saturation 50 and yeah as I mentioned sharpness at 4 is ok but if you want the purest image set it to 0. Gamma middle, color temperature warm and you see red gain 0, green gain minus 7, blue gain minus 43. HDR, very interesting control and I'm surprised other manufacturers are not implementing it. However, as I've discovered before while testing Sharp TVs, even though this control should switch from HDR image to SDR, it results in washed out colors and very flat looking image, so it's not well implemented, so it's best to keep it turned on and ignore it. Maybe with some software update they will correct it. Display mode automatic and then in advanced video you see everything is turned off. Auto low latency mode, not important for movies of course, but to trigger game mode. 10 bit color reproduction, basically you can test it but turning it off you won't miss anything, especially since HDR content is 10 bit and this TV didn't have any issues displaying gradations. Motion enhancement, so if you want to see image without soap opera effect, then set it to off. HDMI range, RGB range auto and low blue light off. Color tuner, let's see what we have here, hue values. Saturation, brightness, and let's see, white balance, offset, and gain. And again you have 11 point white balance correction, which I didn't use, and that's it. And now let's see game HDR10 settings. So pretty much everything the same. Color temperature, red gain 0, green gain minus 7, blue gain minus 43 on my unit. HDR enabled, display mode automatic, advanced video, everything disabled. We have ALLM mode enabled, PC mode disabled, 10 bit color reproduction low or off. Now let's see advanced video. Everything turned off, ALLM mode enabled, 10 bit color reproduction off, motion enhancement effect off, and everything else either auto or off. Color tuner, let's see if there are some changes here. Small change to magenta, saturation, everything at default 50, brightness also default, offset. You see these values on my unit and gain like this and 11 point white balance not active. And now let's load some Dolby Vision content that you see. So notification of Dolby Vision. If we go to picture mode, you see you have Dolby Vision bright and Dolby Vision dark. So choose between them, don't use Vivid, it's not that accurate. For example, for Dolby Vision Dark, you see backlight is not available, everything else is at default. And these are the values, color temperature, advanced video, here everything turned off, motion enhancement off, Color tuner, no changes here, but you have again plenty of options for tweaking. And 11 point white balance correction. And that's it related to picture settings on Sharp's EQ series for 2022. Overall, I would say I got good results on this TV in terms of picture processing tests. 
Uh, there are plenty of controls for tweaking picture, as you saw. There is no global dimming, so in darker scenes, TV will not automatically dim image to, to hide imperfections of backlight, so you will get consistent result. Uh, light sensor controls are logically placed, so everything in the same menu and you see how it works, which is great. It's something that major manufacturers like Samsung and LG should learn from this implementation by Sharp. And overall, in movie mode, accurate colors and with little help of available settings, really good image, you can enjoy movies and other content on this TV. It's fully comparable to major manufacturers, to bigger manufacturers on the market and I would say it offers a good alternative if you need a TV in this price category. Guys, that's it from me to you in this video. Let me know if you own this TV, what are your impressions, which picture mode have you used and yeah, I would be happy to find out what is your experience with this TV. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in my new upcoming videos. Bye!